Mist. Halleluja, Jesus. <clears throat> now, Exodus chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a fire, a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. The bush was not consumed. Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called on him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. He said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Hallelujah. I want to put your Bibles down. Let's just lift our hands. Let's ask God to help us tonight. God, we thank you. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. God, we realize we can do nothing without you, Lord. We just thank you for your spirit. We feel here right now, God. I'm asking you to help me, Lord. God, to follow the Holy Ghost in this service, God, that you would move in this house right now, God. Speak to our hearts, oh God. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Let's just give him a hand clap of praise before you're seated, God. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I worship you, dear God. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I know I've preached from this before, but I want to preach just a little bit different tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost directing me. Amen. I want to title it The Bush Experience, but it's probably going to be all over everything. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. The Word of God tells us that Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Mount Horeb is referred to here as the mountain of God. I, you know, we, we all have had mountain experiences. We've all had valley experiences. Amen. Moses was having a desert experience. Amen. How many of you ever been in a place where it seemed like God was a long ways off? Amen. Moses was just living life. Amen. He was just doing what he did best. Amen. He was just going about his everyday vocation. It just so happened that uh, that job was to tend to the sheep of his father-in-law. Amen. I don't know how good the uh, father-in-law and, and Moses' relationship was. It must have been pretty good. Amen. He's out tending to his father-in-law's sheep. And uh, he, you got to understand the first 40 years Moses spent was uh, under Pharaoh's court. Amen. It was uh, raised in the palaces of Pharaoh, raised uh, in, in an era, amen, an area where uh, no God was worshipped. Amen. They, they worshipped all kind of gods. They made gods out of everything. They made the river was a god to them. The moon was a god to them. The sun was a god to them. Every single thing was a god. And uh, uh, they were looking at the created things instead of the creator. Amen. But all the time in that 40 years that he was in Pharaoh's court, amen, the Bible said that uh, his mother actually uh, became his nursemaid right after he was delivered from the river and the Nile River. Amen. His mother was picked to be his nursemaid, and uh, so he was actually raised by his own mother. Amen. Who instilled the things of God into him. Amen. So even though he was going through uh, a time in his life in Pharaoh's court, amen, and uh, it, you know, it looked like uh, he could turn away from his God uh, all during that time he was being taught to hold on hallelujah amen and uh, then came the time when uh, you know he slew the Egyptian that he saw beating on a uh, Israelite 
And then he ran for his life. For fear of his life, he ran to the wilderness. And there, amen, is where we find him in the wilderness. I, I don't know about you. I've had times in my life where uh, everything was going good. And it looked like I was living in Pharaoh's court, so to speak. Amen. I, I, everything in my life was, was all hunky-dory. And, and then all of a sudden I found myself running in the middle of a wilderness and wondering how did I get here and uh, wondering why my life changed and wondering why things, uh, amen, were like they were. But I want you to know tonight God does everything with a purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. If Joseph had never been to prison, amen, his family would have never been delivered. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. So God has a reason and God has time. Amen. That everything takes place in our life. We don't always understand uh, God's reasoning. We don't understand God's timing for sure. Hallelujah. Amen. I've tried to uh, comprehend the timing of God. I've just not been able to do that. Amen. I, I've tried my best to understand, amen, the, uh, the, uh, the, the way God does stuff, and I just can't seem to grasp it. Amen. There's something on the inside of me that will not let me comprehend it. Hallelujah. Maybe I'm a little on the dense side. I don't know, but I know this much, said God. Amen. That I serve a living God. I serve a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think. Hallelujah. According to the power that works in us. And, and sometimes he takes you into a, an area in your life where things are dry and dull and dead and you don't understand. And the church, amen, I, I preached a message here uh, several years ago about the seasons of a church. And every church goes through the seasons, amen. There's a, a summertime when everything is just going right and, uh, and souls are getting the Holy Ghost and the church is growing and then all of a sudden along comes uh, fall and things begin to slack off and, uh, and then all of a sudden winter shows up in the spirit. I'm talking about spiritual tonight and then when the winter spirit shows up uh, amen everything just kind of is dormant and you're, you're, you're trying your best to get through there because you understand amen that spring is about to break forth. Hallelujah. I want somebody to understand tonight in this place amen that we are on the verge of spring. Hallelujah. Amen. In the spirit we're on the verge of summer in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. We're fixing to experience one of the greatest revivals this church has ever seen. We're fixing to experience one of the greatest moves of God that this place has ever had. Amen. I'm excited because I know God is in control. I'm excited tonight. Amen. Because I know I've got a God. Hallelujah. That's an on time God. Hallelujah. Amen. I've got a God tonight. Amen. That is in control. He is the master of this situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Moses is in the desert, and the Bible refers to him as being close to the mountain of God when this all began to take place. Amen. Uh, Exodus 17, 6 describes the incident when the Israelites were in the wilderness without water. Amen. Guess where Moses was at when that happened? Yeah, that was up on top of Mount Horeb. Amen. He was on a rock on the edge of this same mountain. So you see, even though he was looking... Amen. At, at, at a situation that didn't look right. He was looking at a situation that looked all dead and dry and dull. Amen. He, he, he was just going about normal life. Amen. Some days I look at my life and I think, Lord, this is just mundane. Amen. Everything is just going the same every day. It doesn't seem like anything exciting is happening. It's just life. And all of a sudden, in the midst of his life, just a normal, everyday life, he comes face to face with God. Hallelujah. Oh, I want somebody here tonight to understand me. Amen. That you can live life normally and all of a sudden find yourself at the foot of the mountain of God. At the place. Amen. Where God will do the miracles. Hallelujah. You can just be living life to its normal extent and all of a sudden find yourself at the base of the miraculous. Hallelujah. Uh, you understand amen that this Moses guy is at the base of what they called the Mount of God, Mount Horeb. It was also on Mount Horeb, 
Amen. That God later gave Moses the Ten Commandments. You call it Sinai. Amen. You call it Horeb. It's the same mountain. It's the same uh, uh, area. Amen. But I want you to know tonight, amen, that God used Moses mightily. But it was after a wilderness experience. It was after a time, amen, when he was just living his life to the norm. And all of a sudden, God began to speak to him in, in miraculous ways. Uh, we need, and this is why I said tonight, it's so important that we begin to tune our lives. You see, we just have gotten into the place. We fall into a rut sometimes, amen, just living life. And, and we kind of put God as second fiddle. We really don't spend the time we need to with him. But I can promise you, amen, that God is still there. I can promise you that there's a mountain in your life that's waiting, amen, to be conquered. I can promise you, amen, that in the midst of your life, there's some miracles that are waiting to happen. But you see, we, we kind of just have a tendency to hold on and just be satisfied with living life. Moses, what are you doing? Well, I'm just tending to a bunch of sheep down here in this valley. What is that right there? That's Mount Horeb. That is the Mount of God. You don't understand the significance of that. All you see is a mountain, and you're just feeding your sheep at the base of the mountain. All of a sudden, things begin to change, though, as the burning bush begins to talk to you. All of a sudden, things begin to change in your life as the voice of God begins to speak clearly. Oh, let me tell you tonight, amen, there's a, right in the middle of all the turmoil and all the life that you're living, amen, God's got a special place, hallelujah, uh, God's got a sacred place in there that he wants to take you to. There's a special place already prepared where the miraculous can happen, but we've got to begin to seek it, hallelujah. Amen. We've got to begin to be sensitive to the spirit world. Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, is where Moses stood on the edge of when the people murmured. He spoke to, spoke to a rock. Instead, he struck it. Amen. So that's where he made one of his first mistakes with God. It's his mistake that cost him not getting to see or not getting to be in the promised land. Amen. The only mistake that the Bible records that uh, angered God enough that God said, that's it, you won't go into the promised land, you'll see it, but you won't go in it. Amen. I, I want you to understand tonight, amen, it, it was that mountain that just a few chapters later, hallelujah, amen, just a little while later, oh, God begins to deal with old Moses, and the people of God are gathered at the base of this mountain. It was there that all of a sudden, amen, they, they watched Moses as he went up into that mountain, and they saw the thunderings, and they saw the lightnings, and they saw the fire. Oh, let me tell you something. That same mountain is the same mountain, amen, that the Bible records that a Elijah ran to. Oh, when, whenever he went and he hid himself in a cave, it was in that same mountain. Oh, there was a lot of power. There was a lot of miracles. There was a lot of things that were happening around that place. But to Moses at that point in time, amen, it was just another mountain like everything else around him. It was just a little hill right out in the middle of his pasture, so to speak. And, and he didn't really pay it much attention and it really didn't mean that much to him at that time. But I want somebody to understand tonight, amen, that even though he was living his life the normal way, amen, God was showing him every day he had passed by that mountain. He didn't realize that he was passing right by the miraculous. He had no idea and no clue, amen, how many lives were going to be affected by a meeting he'd have on that mountain with God. Oh, somebody needs to understand tonight, amen, you're living life to the norm and every day you're passing right set out for you. Amen. One day God's going to speak to you. You need to be sensitive enough to make the connection because you got to understand that when you make that connection, it's not going to just affect you, but it's going to affect a lot of people around you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Thank you. amen. Moses, uh, you know, Moses is hindered by a bush is burning. First, you start to pass it on by, you know, 
Uh, they, they tell me, I've never been out there, but they tell me the, the desert out that area gets so hot. Uh, some of you guys has been over there and been deployed over there can for sure vouch for that, but they say it's, it's so hot in those areas of the world that uh, the bushes will just catch on fire of spontaneous combustion and just burn up. But there was something about this bush that got his attention, amen, and that was the fact that it was burning, but it wasn't burning up. Amen. Hallelujah. I said it was burning, but it wasn't burning up. And, it, and Moses stopped at the bush. Amen. And, and, and he just kind of stared at it. And then uh, out of curiosity, because it wasn't burning up, he began to walk towards it. And if you notice in verse 5, the, the Bible tells me that God spoke and said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Hallelujah. Amen. Removal of the shoes in that day and time was more than just reverence. It was a confession of personal defilement and a conscious unworthiness to stand in the presence of unspotted holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he understood, amen, that he was not even worthy, amen, to come near that voice that he was hearing. Uh, he understood, amen, that uh, this this was not just a, uh, a natural phenomena, amen, that this bush wasn't just burning up, but uh, there was something um, amazing about this incident. And uh, as he began to approach it, the Lord spoke to him and told him to remove the shoes from his feet. He was literally telling him, it's time Moses, for you to take off some things that are between me and you. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Somebody here tonight needs to understand that the reason you're not having the move of God in your life is because you've allowed some things in your life. Amen. You've allowed some things to hinder you from being between you and God. Amen. You've got to do as Moses did. You've got to step out of those shoes and kick them off and say, you know, God, there's nothing in this world worth dying for. There's nothing in this world that's going to hinder me. There's some things that I've allowed to come between me and you, and I'm going to take them off. I'm going to get them out of my life. I'm going to cast them aside because the only thing I really desire is that I can be close to you. Hallelujah. You see, Moses couldn't draw close to God. He couldn't draw close to that bush until he got rid of those things that were between between him and God. Oh, it was an act of repentance. It was an act of church of serving himself. Amen. And searching his soul and making sure that everything within him was all right before he stepped up to that bush. Oh, let me tell you something today. Amen. God is telling somebody here tonight, you may have been in the wilderness a while, but you're coming face to face with God. And all God wants you to do, amen, is to repent. All God wants you to do is to leave behind some things that have been hindering you. Amen. Now, there's another thing about Horeb. Exodus chapter 33 verse 6 is where God told the Israelites to strip off all their ornaments. Those things that were between him and them. So when God spoke to Moses, that was just the first time that God was saying, you've allowed some things to come between me and you. Next time it's with Israel. Hallelujah. And God is saying, you need to strip off all the ornaments, take off all the gold, take off all those, those, those ornaments that you've got on, because that's a hindrance to you. And so they begin to pull them off. And you, you, you know what the purpose was? They, 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 God wanted them to get close to him. God wanted them to become near him. Amen. And they couldn't become near to him simply because of the fact there was something that was a hindrance. There was something between them and him. Hallelujah. Amen. They had to get rid of those things that were holding them back. Oh, listen to me. Somebody here tonight, we need to understand, amen, that there are things that are in our lives that we allow which are a hindrance to 
of living for God. You, you wonder why I have such a time. I have such a battle. It's, it's so hard to live for God. I'll tell you why it's hard to live for God. It's because you pick up too much of the world. You pick up too much of its desires. You pick up too much of its stuff. Amen.